Welcome to Buffalo Game Day Recap. I'm Thad Brown. He's AJ Feldman. The Bills get a huge win over the Dolphins, 30 to 27. Tyler Bass, right over there, made a 61-yard field goal to win it. And more importantly, AJ, the Bills finally ended the daylight savings curse. Please explain what that is, though. Yeah, the last three times that the Bills have played on the day that the clocks go back, they've lost in some ugly games. So not only the curse of whatever Tyler Bass has been going through so far this season was lifted, the daylight savings time curse, which many people uh, were quite amused by, in many so words, on, on social media this week. That is now officially dead. Yeah, the Jags lost, the Jets lost, one of them on the road were both the day after daylight savings time. The Bengals as well. Exactly. So the, the, this is not, this was almost that, but it wasn't. And Tyler Bass is the hero of this game. AJ, kind of take us through, you're on the field. What was it like both as Bass is running onto the field and then immediately after the kick and then after the game? It was such an interesting moment because, you know, you think about game-winning field goals, usually there's like a grand buildup. There, there was really nothing like that. On that final drive, you didn't even know if they were going to try and aggressively chase points. There was the sack. They started running off some time to prevent a Miami score at the end. And then things were really going, you know, really nowhere on offense. They get the penalty from Jordan Poyer, which, um, you know, injures Keon Coleman. We'll see what turns into that. And then it was still at a point where you're doing the math and you're like, 61 yards, like, are they going to go? You didn't even know if they were going to try the kick until you literally saw Tyler Bass run onto the field. And then it happens, it goes, you know, the kick is maybe 10 yards up the uprights and just pandemonium breaks out onto the field. The confetti cannons go off in the stadium. I don't know if that's exactly what you're supposed to do with five seconds to go in the game. There was confetti flowing uh, during the, the kickoff on the ensuing play. You know, the team rallies around him, you know, practically lifted him off the field, Rudy style. It was just a fun moment. And, you know, the Bills and CBS have released uh, videos from inside the locker room. A really emotional postgame scene there. As you might imagine, because Tyler Bass, like we've kind of alluded to here, has been through a lot. And, and this wasn't just, you know, a, a big football win. This is a personal story about a guy. We've talked about it a bunch of times here who's been going through a lot this year. He has not done the job. He knows that his career is on the brink, to say the least, the last few weeks. And the way he was able to make this kick, there are a lot of players in the locker room talking about how proud they were of him. Resiliency was a word thrown around a lot. This is not an easy thing to do. These are players who can be cut and released at any time. Tyler Bass understands that. And he made a kick in this game that not only saved a win, but saved his career, at least for a good long while. And there's, there's something that is very impressive about that beyond just, hey, the Bills are seven and two and look how much of a lead they have in the AFC East. This is a person's life that's on the line. And he stepped up in a big spot and made the kick. And and like you said, he didn't just barely make it. He <laughs> hammered the dang thing. So, you know, an impressive day for Tyler Bass after uh, an impressive early. finish. Impressive finish, you're right. <laughs> that's exactly the right way to put it, because he missed the PAT early in the game. Let's let's talk about this for a second. Where are we with Tyler Bass? and his job on the Bills. Because like you said, yeah, the end was great, <laughs> but not only did he miss a kick, he put down, uh, bounced another PAT off an upright. How safe is his job right now on a scale of one to, of course it is? Uh, one being the last, I think we're up to a six, I would say. You know, you miss a couple kicks, now you get back on the wrong side of it. It, it obviously buys him some time. It mm -hmm. buys him probably at least a month. And you, it, things would have to go pretty horribly wrong to you know, cut Tyler Bass after what he did today, winning them a game on a 61-yard field goal. But, but as you mentioned, it wasn't perfect. You miss an extra point, you, you, you doink another one in. That's, as a whole, you know, you look at, you, you back out of what this emotional moment was, Kind of a bad day for Tyler Bass, just well, in terms of pure makes and misses. I mean, uh, he didn't. I think it's a good day with a 61 yard. I know what yeah. you're saying. It wasn't a perfect day or a clean day. So there's things that need to get better consistently going forward. But I, I think he's going to probably be the kicker for the rest of the year now. It, it would it would take something pretty drastic. Right. And, and the other thing is too, if the Bills want, we talked about this the last three weeks. It seemed like the Bills should have and could have replaced them the last few games they did not mm -hmm. I think a part of that has to be there are not any available options out there that are markedly better than what the Bills have so when you look at yeah this other guy might be a little more consistent with 33 yard point afters but I don't know if he's going to hammer a 61 yarder to win a game well of course you're going to keep Tyler Bass and that's not necessarily that doesn't mean that Tyler Bass's kicking issues are done but I don't think the Bills are going to find anybody that they can get 
that they believe will be better, even if you might have to deal the rest of the year with the fact that, you know, one out of every three games, he's going to have a few that bounce out the wrong way. I think you will be able to tell very quickly what this means for Tyler Bass going forward because the issue, we would assume, was confidence. And you mental. can't, you yeah, can't get more confidence than what you got today. So if next week, if he misses one and a half kicks, okay, what are we doing here? Mm -hmm. But if we see, you know, uh, a market improvement going forward, I think now you think, okay, his confidence is back. He's good to go for the time being, and they're going to ride him out the rest of the season. That's a good point because if, if it's not mental, if it doesn't look like it's mental the next month or so, then it becomes physical. Then you start to wonder if you can depend on him long term. All right, there are obviously a lot of other parts of this game to get to. Um, for me, let's start with the way the defense played because um, – this was not a good day for the Bills' defense. No. Dolphins ran it for 150-some yards. Um, Tua Tagovailoa really was not harassed uh, when it came to dropping back to throw. And, yes, there were injuries for the Bills on both sides of the ball. They were missing Amari Cooper. They were missing Christian Benford. But Benford not being in this game, to me, had very little to do with the way the Dolphins succeeded on offense. Yeah, I mean, they ran the ball down the Bills' throats at will. The defensive line couldn't get any pressure. Terrell Bernard really didn't look like himself out there, you know, trying to come back from injury. So th there's a lot to, um, you know, criticize of the Bills' defense. I thought it was a really nice game from the Dolphins' offense. They had a lot of really nice uh, scripted plays and design plays. You know, the HN touchdown uh, on the little wheel route out of the backfield was a really nice design play, kind of the, the quasi-screen they had going there. So, that you know, the, the Dolphins are supposed to be, and we think are, a very good offense with two at the helm. Mike McDaniel is a very good offensive coach. So... It's not the end of the world for the Bills to play this bad with the injuries they were facing, but certainly not, you know, passing grades for the defense today. No, I, I agree. I think you make a good point there that we should, the number of times the Bills have owned this Dolphins team, the fact that Miami does anything positive, you're like, <laughs> what What happened to the Bills? What terrible calamity befell Buffalo today? But you're right, Miami has good players. They had a good game plan. I agree with both of those. And there were a couple of things that you would call mistakes. Um, obviously, the Von Miller offside penalty prolonged a drive. But for the most part, this was more Miami good offense than it was bad Bills defense. I think the run game remains a concern. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, you know, when we talk about pass rush, the Bills had everybody that you would want on the defensive line. Von Miller was back and didn't generate much of a pass rush against an offensive line that's not very good. But outside of that, this was in large part a very talented offensive coach with a very talented offensive team having success. Yeah, the run defense is probably the biggest factor you take away from this game. It's been a problem in the past, obviously, the Ravens and, and other games in general. Last week was very good against the Seahawks. This week we saw it again. So if you were you know, thinking that they solved some you know, grand problems, they're still there. Let's talk about Kyrie Elam for a second. He was the guy who stepped in for Christian Benford. I was a little surprised. I really thought Jamarcus Ingram, who had a little better training camp and who's been the guy who's been in on dime defense most of the time this year, would have gotten the nod. I thought Elam played okay. You know, really wasn't much of a factor. Recovered a fumble that turned out to not be a fumble on the John o. Smith play where he was down. Um, but as we've he said... He did recover the other fumble, he, correct? The first one, right? Wasn't that uh, him? The Taron Johnson play. I believe that was Elam. I can double check it. Either way, I'll yeah. look at that. I think you're right. He was around um, the ball. He was around the ball. I think he was fine. You know, and, and this game, when it comes to where the Dolphins succeeded, was not on the outside. You know, uh, Tyreek Hill had four catches on five targets. Uh, Jalen Wallow got two balls thrown his way. Odell Beckham, who I forgot was on the Dolphins, had three targets for, you know, not much of anything. So this was not a game where it was – Kyer Elam being tested despite the weapons Miami had out there. The Dolphins had plenty of success attacking other places. But I think for Elam to be able to play a game, to look okay, to be probably confident, we'll check the film and see how it was, was a, a very solid step for him. Especially with what is going on Tuesday, the trade deadline. Yeah. If there was one player on the Bills who you would target as, you know, a player that could be traded away, another team to see a first round pick who's really not seeing the field. Is, is Does this opportunity mean that the Bills want to keep him on their roster? Was this a great audition for, our, for Kyir Elam for other teams? I guess we'll see what Brandon Bean decides I to do. I don't think the Bills would use a division game as a let's throw the guy out there that we want to show everybody else so we can trade him. I, I don't, I'm not saying that's why they put him out there. I'm just I'm not, saying not. It, it, yeah, you yeah. Know, it works into a great audition for, for any GM watching. I mean, uh, there was a thought about that because the Bills are up three, whatever game, four games in the division. You know, They probably – did have a game to, to toss. You know, if they lost this game, it was not the end of the world. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't think this was an experiment or a no. showcase by no. itself. They, they thought Elon was the better player, yeah. and he certainly did not hurt him today. 
Let's go to the offensive side of the ball. Um, first half, not great. Now, Keon Coleman makes one really big mistake, and if he does it, maybe this game plays out much differently early because the Bills were on the three-yard line going in. You score a touchdown there, now you're up seven. Maybe you just control the game all the way through. But I want to point out how good the offense was in the second half. And again, for two weeks in a row now, the Bills have scored 30 points without Amari Cooper being a factor. Mm -hmm. And again this week, we go back to the other pieces um, being important. You know, last week was kind of the Shakir tight ends, Keon Coleman show. Today we're back to kind of everybody eats a little bit. They had, I think, nine different guys with receptions, three different guys scored touchdowns. It was the reserves. I mean, like literally the bottom of the depth chart yes. at each three of the other positions scored the touchdowns today. So you got to give this Bills team credit for finding a way without their A1 number one receiver, who we assume will really be that at some point in Amari Cooper. I think it shows what the benefit of having Amari Cooper back will be. You know, you can do this for times. You can do everybody eats at times. The second half, it worked great. It worked fantastic. You know, the uh, the depth players were getting it done. In that first half, you need a guy to step up and make a play, a guy who could be Amari Cooper, you know, separate from coverage. They really weren't getting much separation in that first half. And you were seeing, you know, when guys were thrust into positions, they were just, you know, missing. Keon Coleman obviously had the drop. James Cook, another costly drop, which he's probably got one guy to beat, and it would have been a touchdown uh, down there in the red zone. You know, Josh Allen has to kind of put on a Superman cape a little bit, get the first down uh, that did count, and then got the touchdown that didn't end up counting for, uh, you know, a questionable penalty. So we'll talk about that in a moment. Yeah. yeah. So at, at times it works, but I think this just just goes to show when you add that player in uh, in Amari Cooper back to the lineup whenever he gets back, I think that just shows how much more dangerous this offense can be. That's right. Because now you're not. Well, you can go. Everybody eats for a couple drives. You can rely on Mac Hollins here and there, but the things that you want to rely on constantly are the Amari Coopers of the world. And you know, when the Bills don't have him, the, there was a little bit of a whiff of Josh Allen going Superman in this game. Mm -hmm. I think it was early third quarter or so. But the Bills got through it. I mean, second half, you know, they did whatever they needed to do. Three touchdown drives and a game-winning field goal drive. Granted, that, that drive was not very good either. <laughs> but overall, I think this was a successful offensive game um, with a variety of factors. Keon Coleman, disappointing that he had had two good games in a row and this was a drop and then one other catch with a two-point conversion. So two receptions, one that I count in the stat page. I wouldn't really worry too much. I think where he is as a rookie is what you're going to get. You're going to get a couple nice games. You're going to get this. Overall, though, the Bills had enough pieces to get this done, even without Amari Cooper. Yeah, you know, the run game really didn't get much done on offense. Um, under 100 yards, I believe, overall, yeah. total 94. And a decent bit of that was Josh Allen running. We'll see, uh, you know, the availability going forward of A, Amari Cooper, B, Curtis Samuel, who – I don't know how many snaps he played. I didn't really notice him out there much at all. He got a few. Uh, I, I bet it was about a dozen. He did have a target in this game, so he was he was out there at least. So the usual disappointing yeah, Curtis Samuel. Same, same all year with him. And then you know we'll see what happens with Keon Coleman uh, after taking that big hit. He, he didn't seem 100% healthy after that, as as you would imagine. So we'll see about that going forward. But no, some you know it's what we've seen from the offense: some some high points and some low points. The uh, penalty on Osiris Torrance that had most of the Bills fan base up in arms. I can understand why. Um, there was a grab of the jersey. Was that, it not? Was it not Spencer Brown? Uh, we thought it was on Osiris Torrance up in the press box. Did you guys think it was Spencer Brown? I mean, I was just seeing tweets, so you know, I, and I'm very. Um, Let me see sparingly. what the official says here. All right, the official report. Get some, uh, some looking up the penalty music. Do, oh, Osiris do, Torrance, do. yeah. Okay. So, uh, officially was on Torrence. On, on the touchdown, they got called back. The touchdown back. for okay, Josh yeah. Allen, yeah. So there is a grab of the jersey on the right side to Torrance's right, which is Josh Allen ran around to the right. Generally, what I say about penalties is you got to look for a restriction. So did Osiris Torrance illegally, by grabbing the jersey, prevent that defensive lineman from going out to chase Josh Allen? Josh Allen? One of the things that make this penalty happen, in my opinion, is that where the grab is is directly in line of the ref. I mean, mm -hmm. he could not have missed it. It would, if you would highlight, if you had stopped the world and taken a yellow highlighter and circled it, he would not have been able to see it as easy. That would be a strange use of the ability to stop time. For sure, for sure. But <laughs> just go with me on this. So that was part of it. That it was obvious to the referee. The other thing was the the replays that we saw up in the booth were 
from a, a totally different angle. They were from the sideline. They were not from the same angle the referee had. If you had an end zone angle, and we will when the All-22 comes out tomorrow, you'll get a better idea of if there was restriction. I will say that from the video that we saw, there was no restriction. That should not have been a penalty call. But because the grab happens and it's right in front of the ref, it's, it's one of those things. So many penalties in the NFL are, are gray areas. They're not black and white. And once you get the grab of the jersey, it does fall into the gray area a little bit. Normally, like I said, you want restriction after that. But I can understand the Bills and their fans being upset. End of the game obviously didn't matter. Yeah, because you talk to offensive linemen, what, 70% of the time your blocking right. involves grabbing the other person. So you get away with it. You try and let go when they go on the outside. And, you know, maybe another argument for the uh, the almighty sky judge, sky judge that people have been asking for, I don't know including the, myself. I don't know if the sky judge would overturn this again because the, the TV angles that we got were just not – not to the where I was going to say for sure mm -hmm. there was no restriction. It didn't look like it. I didn't like the call. Um, that was really the only call I didn't like in this game. The Jordan Poyer penalty is as egregious as it yeah. gets. I don't know if the Bills are going to send him a fruit basket for helping them <laughs> win this game because he did. I mean, Keon Coleman was not making that catch. All Jordan Poyer probably has to do is run over there and watch. And instead he throws a helmet. It was lucky he wasn't ejected. That's how obvious the penalty was. Yeah. Um, I think Jordan Poyer in his press conference was uh, arguing about it. I don't think Did he really? I, I think so, yeah. I didn't look into the Jordan Poyer press conference. That's, I'm, you know, I love Jordan Poyer, enjoyed him uh, when he was here in Buffalo and talking to him. That is as obvious and as easily a, a penalty call um, as you can get. Although I don't think a defensive back has ever agreed with that sure. sort of penalty. Yeah. I mean, we worked with uh, Carl Jones for a long enough time. Uh, if a defender got a penalty, you knew it was a penalty because um, they root for the defense uh, on that. Let's see if um, – While you're checking, one yep. thing I also want to talk about with this game is the Bills' offensive line does not get enough credit. Um, there were multiple plays, at least before the last drive. Suddenly and during the last drive, there was pressure on the quarterback. For the entirety of the other 58 minutes, I thought the Bills' offensive line did a really good job keeping Josh Allen clean. The fourth down touchdown – is a long developing, longer developing play that you need to help with the quarterback. I know Josh is rolling a little bit there. The two-point conversion was a play where Josh Allen was in the pocket for quite a long time. That turned out to be a pretty big play at the game because I don't know if Tyler Bass, you know, if, if Tyler Bass comes out there and is kicking in a spot where the Bills are down and a miss loses the game as opposed to, well, if I miss, we just go to overtime. Who knows what the, the mental approach is? So I thought the Bills' offensive line, um, had another really good game. And even though the Bills didn't run for more than 100 yards, the per carry average was still in the fours. So this was another good offensive line game for the Bills. Also on offense, you know, Matt Collins, five catches for 30 yards, wasn't hugely involved, but when they needed a, a couple plays, he was there to step up in a spot where, you know, if Amari Cooper's healthy, he probably doesn't even get on the field in a receiving capability too often. He made plays when the Bills needed him to today. And that's the amount of Matt Collins you want in your life exactly. on offense. Yes. And the other quote from Jordan Poyer, I thought it was a clean play. He was wrong. <laughs> but this isn't the first time that I've, A, listened to a defensive player or a football player complain about a penalty that was on them, or B, not fully understand the rules of the NFL, which one would think they would, but they've got a lot of things to worry about than the minutia of the NFL rule book. All right, end of the day here, you know, this is a game where there are movies that are made about less. I mean, this was the Tyler Bass story. You know, all the things that he's been through, um, Reed Ferguson was asked about after he missed the point after, did the Bills have to talk to Tyler Bass? Did they have to console him? And he said, no, no, we didn't have to talk to him. He, he knew what he had to correct. So many guys were proud of him. So many guys were impressed with his resiliency and the toughness. And, you know, you could tell when, when – this is a Bills team that loves to rah-rah each other. And, and I don't blame them. It's fun. When you get a story like this, it's so easy to do. And it's just going to rally everybody up. And to your point about what it was like in the locker room, these are things that you build on throughout the year. And these are the reasons why the Bills have been so good in the regular season, why they win all these AFC East titles, because they get contributions from all over the roster. And then when, when player A has a big game, player B gets excited. Then player B has a big game, player A gets excited. And it just rallies together. And this is why the Bills are this about to be a fifth consecutive AFC East champion. Especially in a season like this where the AFC East is down. The Bills are going to run away with this division. They're going to get a home playoff game no matter what. They're going to make the playoffs. What is the value in these regular season games? It is tough to imagine a regular season game potentially being more impactful down the line than the confidence boost for Tyler Bass. If you could, like, you know, 
you bottle know, this? If you if you could bottle this up, or if you could, you know, if you play like um, role playing games, uh, video games, like you put your stats in a certain category, like oh, I'm going to build all of my stats on, you know, attack, on defense, magic, or whatever. If Sean McDermott like walks up, like where do I, wanna, you know, put all my team building in today? You might put all of your chips in Tyler Bass's confidence and say, okay, if we can only have this game be Tyler Bass is going good down the stretch, I think that's a, a fair trade. So. It's tough to imagine a sort of meaningless regular season game. Obviously, they all matter. Obviously, seeding matters. You know, you're trying to chase the Chiefs. You're trying to get home playoff games. But for a season in which they're running away with the division, they're going to make the playoffs, they're trying to finally break through in the playoffs, getting Tyler Bass on track, it's tough to imagine a circumstance where things go better for them in a game. It's a great point. You know, the, the, this was more than just a win in a lot of ways. And, and for the long term of the Bills season, having their kicker, not only having the kicker believe in himself, but buoying the rest of the team to believe in said kicker is an important part of this W. Anything else from you for this game? I think that's also a good point there is that, you know, now the offense has a little more confidence when they're driving down the field that they don't need to get touchdowns, they can get field goals. You know, if, if you believe in your kicker, I think that also changes the way you approach offense. Bills have now won four in a row. Uh, they have now gone three quarters of the way through this four game stretch where we kind of looked at and said they could make some hay and they have made plenty of hay three wins in a row over the the three not so great teams they've played they got one more coming up a road trip to indianapolis next week it's, and trap, then, it's trap game time yeah yeah we'll, we'll <laughs> talk about that for sure because the chiefs here in orchard park await following that cold scheme but we'll have plenty of time to get into that seven and two for the bills they are in control in the afc east there will almost certainly be at least one home playoff game here but we got two more months of football before that happens Remember, you can always watch Buffalo Game Day Recap at RochesterFirst.com. Click on the Sports tab. We're on 8 Sports Extra. You can also find us on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. For A.J. Feldman, I'm Thad Brown. We will talk to you next week. I'll be in Indianapolis. A.J. will be back in the studio. But as always, the same great product, Buffalo Game Day Recap. <laughs>